Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Greek voters delivered a resounding rebuke to austerity on Sunday when over 61 percent voted no to the proposal on the table for more austerity by its lenders. It is testimony to the resilience of the Greek people. And on Monday morning when we woke up, we woke up to the resignation of former finance minister Yanis Varoufakis. And by the afternoon, a new Greek finance minister was sworn in, Euclid Sakalotis. Here to discuss the latest developments is Dimitri Laskaris. He's a partner with the Canadian law firm Siskins, where he heads the firm's securities class action practice. He has been reporting and analyzing the Greek economy for the Real News Network over the, on a regular basis since the election of Syriza. Dimitri, thank you so much for joining us. It's good to be back, Sharmini. So, uh, Yanis Varoufakis had initially said he would resign if the vote was yes, but the vote was clearly no. So then why did he resign? Well, I don't think any of us is going to know that uh, for some time to come. I mean, there are several theories that have been circulating. Uh, one is on the weekend, and uh, he, had, uh, he, he had an interview with uh, Ambrose Evans, preacher of The Telegraph, in which uh, he, minister or ex-minister Varoufakis, uh, raised the possibility of issuing a parallel currency. And some in the uh, European mainstream press have speculated that that uh, was uh, a bridge too far for uh, Prime Minister Tsipras because it suggested uh, potentially the laying of a groundwork for a return to the Drachma, which is something that is has been heresy to the, the leadership of Syriza until now. Uh, I find it difficult to believe that that is the reason um, you know, other members of the party have come out quite forcefully, including Kosas Lapavitsis, for a return to the euro without any significant consequences. So that seems to be, uh, especially at this particular point in time when Greece has had this historic... You mean a return to the drachma? A return to the drachma, sorry. And, and, and especially at a moment where Greece is having a, has enjoying a historic ochi vote, it seems that that uh, transgression, if in fact it was a transgression in the eyes of the prime minister, it seems unlikely that that would have been enough to precipitate uh, a request for his resignation. The other, of course, the more popular theory is that he has ruffled so many feathers uh, amongst the, uh, the leaders and the finance ministers of the Eurogroup uh, that it was perceived that he could not possibly be an effective negotiator uh, going forward. I think that's a more likely explanation. When I first uh, heard the news of his uh, resignation this morning, the thought that came immediately to mind, and I, I have to confess this is speculation on my part, was that as soon as it became clear that the Orchi vote was going to prevail, and resoundingly so, uh, the Greek government received an overture uh, in which it was indicated that uh, finally there was going to be a, a serious discussion about debt relief for Greece, which was a huge sticking point, uh, but that that offer, that olive branch, was coupled with a demand that Varoufakis stepped down. Again, that's just speculation on my part. But given the events that have unfolded uh, in the last several hours, uh, I, I'm finding it very difficult to believe that there was any olive branch at all extended to the Greek government. Uh, so uh, it's difficult to uh, understand exactly why uh, ex-minister Varoufakis departed at this moment. And Dimitri, what do we know about the new finance minister? Well, Euclid uh, Tsakolatos, I think, shares uh, to a very great extent uh, the views of ex-minister Varoufakis on the causes of the crisis. Uh, I think uh, his view would be, and I'm simplifying it, that uh, structural flaws within the Eurozone uh, uh, are largely responsible for this crisis, that uh, austerity has been a disaster for the country and is a, a slow-motion disaster for other uh, countries in the Eurozone that have experienced a somewhat less uh, extremist uh, version of austerity. Uh, he's an Oxford-educated academic. Uh, the main difference between the two of them appears to be stylistic, which is uh, Minister, uh, Finance Minister Tsakolatos has uh, a low-key uh, professorial approach uh, to his interactions with other, uh, his counterparts in the Eurogroup, uh, and is not likely, based on his behavior to date, he has been involved uh, in the negotiations, heavily so and increasingly so, He's described as the brains behind uh, cities as economic policy, but he's kept a very uh, low profile and is not uh, prone to make statements which exacerbate tensions between 
uh, the Eurogroup finance ministers and leaders and uh, those of the Greek government. So I think principally, uh, it appears that the difference is uh, one of style rather than substance. So, Dimitri, what's uh, going to happen now? The vote is clear, and I understand that the IMF is uh, making some overtures towards uh, uh, perhaps a haircut and lending more money to Greek uh, uh, Treasury. What do you think of that, and uh, what are the tough negotiations ahead? Well, the, uh, the IMF, uh, Christine Lagarde today stated uh, that the IMF stood ready uh, was monitoring the situation closely and stood ready to uh, provide assistance to Greece as necessary. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that was the gist of the message. Let's recall that this message is being communicated uh, in the context of a rupture, a very serious rupture between the IMF and uh, the Eurozone. The Eurozone governments are loath to give Greece any debt relief, despite uh, an almost universal recognition that Greece's debt is unsustainable. And the IMF is becoming increasingly uh, has become increasingly vociferous about the need for debt relief. Um, so th that is the background in which the statement was made. Uh, it's difficult to see how the IMF could provide uh, emergency assistance to Greece because uh, the only debt on which Greece is technically defaulted to date is its debt to the IMF. It's not yet defaulted on its debt to the ECB uh, or to uh, the uh, the Euro Eurogroup uh, the Eurogroup uh, governments. Um, but uh, that said, uh, following uh, the, the, the publication of the, 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 the vote yesterday in which it became clear that Ohi uh, was uh, the position supported by the vast majority of the Greek population, um, the ministers, various ministers of the Eurozone government, uh, governments came forward and said that they thought that the result had actually complicated matters, had not clarified matters, had not facilitated a resolution. Uh, Angela Merkel flew to Paris. She met with François Hollande, the French president. Uh, they didn't make any meaningful statements after their meeting. And then uh, the hammer came down on Greece, uh, which is to say that the European Central Bank, uh, which has been providing a lifeline to the Greek banking system, uh, effectively uh, by increasing the discounts that are applied on the collateral uh, that the Greek banks give to the ECB in exchange for emergency loans, uh, effectively, what the ECB did this afternoon was it shortened uh, to an unknown degree the amount of time that Greek banks have before they collapse. Uh, and so this has placed the government, despite its very strong mandate for an anti-austerity resolution, uh, in an extremely difficult position. And I think that the message that's being sent is that despite the vote of the Greek people, the options available to the Greek government are either complete capitulation or a, an exit from the Eurozone. And what does this mean to the people on the ground? Did the banks remain closed uh, up to Wednesday so far, um, and uh, people are having difficulty uh, getting any cash out and uh, obviously affecting their livelihood in a serious way. Um, what is going to happen on the ground? Well, if, if a bank uh, fails, then there isn't going to be any money. Uh, being uh, available for withdrawal from that bank. And at that stage, uh, the Greek government, you know, if the banks begin to fail and uh, they can't even uh, provide the limited funds that uh, they're permitted to provide to their clients under the uh, capital controls, uh, the options available to the Greek bank effectively are nationalizing the banks and uh, beginning to issue a parallel currency. Um, which uh, is almost certainly going to be devalued very significantly in short in short order. Uh, so the value of the holdings of uh, the clients of these banks would uh, would fall potentially precipitously uh, if the B B Greek banking system fails, and this would ultimately be, you know, a, a big step on the uh, on the road to uh, a full exit uh, by Greece from the eurozone and all that that entails. Uh, from my perspective, uh, given the reaction the rather uh, uncharitable and uh, ruthless reaction of the Eurozone to what was a clear mandate, a clear anti-austerity mandate for the Greek government, it is absolutely imperative that the Greek government uh, begin to take steps to prepare for an exit from the Eurozone. And either, that, either that or it's, it's capitulation, which I think is something that would likely cause immense uh, social unrest given the uh, level of support uh, for the anti-austerity uh, position of the government that was expressed yesterday. 
And uh, do you think the leadership of Syriza is prepared for this and also for dealing with the potential uh, in a collapse uh, in the banking system in Greece, as well as trying to um, deal with issuing a new currency? Uh, regrettably, I have seen no signs that they are adequately prepared for that eventuality. Uh, the one or two rays of hope are that, uh, uh, as I said, the IMF has indicated a willingness to provide humanitarian assistance. And, uh, you know, to his credit, and I, I rarely have good things to say about the finance minister of Germany, Wolfgang Schäuble, but he has talked in recent days about uh, providing humanitarian assistance to Greece uh, in the event that the uh, worst comes to pass. Uh, I think there will be some level of humanitarian assistance to uh, maintain order and, uh, you know, a minimum level of social assistance, a very minimal level of social assistance during the transition to a drachma. I'm hopeful that that's the case. But I must say that there are a few signs that the Greek government has uh, embarked upon the extraordinarily complicated task of, uh, of effecting a transition from the euro to a, a new currency. Dimitri Laskaris, uh, I thank you for joining us. I also want to uh, draw the attention of our audience who's interested in Greece. We have several new interviews up, uh, one with um, Heine Flasbeck, uh, who wrote the book Against the Troika, as well as the Greek uh, member of parliament, Kostas Lepavistas. Um, those will all be up uh, on our site. Please watch. And uh, Dimitri, we look forward to your next report tomorrow. Thanks, Jeremy. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.